A 24 armed hunter, threatened with extinction, is set to get protection. Sunflower sea stars, hit by a climate-fueled pandemic, play a key role in keeping marine ecosystems balanced. Sunflower sea stars, huge starfish that until recently thrived in waters up and down the west coast of North America, are threatened with extinction and should be protected under the Endangered Species Act, federal officials said Wednesday. The starfish have been devastated by a wasting syndrome that has been linked to the effects of climate change. It killed more than 90% of sunflower sea stars from 2013 to 2017, in what officials described as the largest marine wildlife disease outbreak on record. The sickness starts with lethargy and lesions followed by tissue decay. Starfish's limbs drop off and they die within days, leaving a gooey pile. We think it's likely exacerbated by the increasing ocean temperature said Sadie Wright, a protected species biologist with National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Fisheries who worked on the status review for the sunflower sea star. Rapid changes in temperatures, another consequence of climate change, also play a role. The starfish's collapse appears to be a factor behind a domino effect of ecological destruction in California's kelp forests. Sunflower sea stars gorge on sea urchins, which have skyrocketed in abundance since the starfish disappeared. The vast numbers of sea urchins started overgrazing kelp, scientists believe, contributing to die-offs of kelp forests. When you remove the sea stars, you see the cascading effects, Ms. Wright said. Sunflower sea stars can sport some 24 limbs and span more than 3 feet, about a meter, from tip to tip. They have been documented from Baja California to the Aleutian Islands. While scientists estimate that 600 million individuals remain worldwide, that number represents less than 10% of the abundance before 2013. Scientists now struggle to find them south of Washington, Ms. Wright said. The species is already considered critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature's Red List of Threatened Species. Some 20 other species of sea stars have also been hit by the wasting syndrome, though sunflower sea stars are thought to be among the worst affected. The proposal to list sunflower sea stars as threatened follows a 2021 petition by the Center for Biological Diversity, a non-profit advocacy group. I'm ecstatic that the sunflower sea star will get the safeguards of the Endangered Species Act said Miyoko Sakashita, the center's oceans program director. A climate-fueled pandemic nearly wiped them out and I'm optimistic that a threatened listing will assist their recovery. One way that could happen is by making new funding available to research the mysterious pathogen that scientists believe is behind the wasting syndrome. A listing decision could also lead to more protections from water pollution, dredging and other coastal construction projects. The federal government will also have to develop a recovery plan for the sea stars Ms. Sakashita said, which can mean more focus on disease prevention and even climate change. A final determination will be made in the next year. If listed, the sunflower sea star would be the first sea star to be federally protected. A lot of people are familiar with this species, it's something they've seen when they were exploring tide pools as kids Ms. Wright said. So there's going to be a lot of surprise that this species we once thought of as common is now being considered for listing under the Endangered Species Act. The missing 24-limbed animals that could help rescue the ocean's forest. Scientists say that reintroducing the fast-moving predators to the west coast could help control the spread of sea urchins that are devouring kelp. The kelp forests off the west coast are dying, and with their decline, an entire ecosystem of marine plants and animals is at risk. A large starfish with an appetite for sea urchins could come to the rescue. One reason for the disappearing kelp is the tremendous expansion of the sea urchin population that feeds on it, including an estimated 10,000% increase in their numbers over the past few years in a reef surveyed off the coast of Oregon. And it may be that sea urchins have multiplied because one of their chief predators, the sunflower sea star, has been nearly wiped out by disease. Scientists prefer sea star to starfish because the animals are not fish. A team of scientists suggests that the population explosion in sea urchins could not have happened if sunflower sea stars had been there to prey on them, and that restoring the population of the colorful creatures may help in the recovery of the kelp forest and the ecosystem it supports. The study appeared last month in Proceedings of the Royal Society B. Scientists estimate that there once were as many as 5 billion sunflower sea stars along the coast from Alaska to Baja California. 
They come in varying shades of purple, brown, orange and yellow, and can grow as large as three feet across with up to two dozen arms. They move quickly, at least for a sea star, up to 200 feet in an hour, but sea star wasting disease, possibly caused by a virus, has killed most of them. To test whether introducing captive bred sunflower sea stars could help, the researchers collected 24 sunflower sea stars and 300 purple sea urchins near the San Juan Islands in Washington and observed them under experimental conditions, recording hunting activity and food preferences. These were healthy sea stars, survivors unaffected by the wasting disease, possibly because they were resistant to the illness. The researchers hope that their offspring will share their characteristics. The scientists found that sea stars were passionate consumers of both juvenile and large adult sea urchins. When sea stars attack, urchins fight back, often pinching off pieces of the sea star's arms and making the attacker back off. If the sea star can persist, it surrounds the urchin and ingests it through the mouth on its underside. After about 18 to 24 hours, it spits out the empty shell, having digested the soft parts, including the roe, which is also a delicacy among sea otters and human sushi eaters. Is re-establishing the sunflower sea star population with captive bred animals practical? Aaron W.E. Galloway, who is an associate professor of marine biology at the University of Oregon and an author of the paper, believes it could be. Just a few sunflower sea star individuals can produce millions of larvae, he said. If they are successful, he says, even a small restoration effort could easily lead to millions of sea stars returning to the wild. Dr. Galloway acknowledged that there are many other factors besides the diminishing sea star population that affect the health of the kelp forest, like climate change and increased periodic heat waves, and he makes no claim that a healthy sea star population is the ultimate solution. There are a lot of things you might try to do, he said. But the restoration of sea stars is one of the most efficient levers we can pull. If we can help sea stars recover naturally, it could have ecosystem scale effects and it works without human intervention after it gets started.